Teletext For most Britons who lived between the mid-1970s to its prime in the late 80s and even the early 1990s, you would remember Teletext. Teletext, or the more commonly known CFAX pages for the BBC, were a staple for British television up until the digital switchover of 2012. While this video is primarily based on CFAX being pioneered by the BBC, we will also go through its similar counterparts like Fortel for Channel 4 and ITV's Oracle system. So, what is Teletext? By definition, Teletext is a UK trademark that can be described as a news and information surface in the form of text and graphics transmitted using the spare capacity of existing television channels to the televisions with appropriate receivers. Well, that wasn't supposed to take me five times to record, but in simplest terms, it uses existing broadcast antennas to show interactive text and graphics on televisions with an analog signal. So, how did this start exactly? Well, in the 1960s, BBC design staff Jeff Lurkby and Barry Piatt were working on an experimental analog text transmission system. The goal was to be able to show a blurb of text during the nighttime close down of channels. See, at the time, 24 7 channels were unheard of, so channels like the BBC had nocturnal close downs like the one here. Well now, at just after 4 o'clock, it's time for us to take a break here on BBC One. But we will be back on air in just under two hours with Business Breakfast. But if you're determined to make a night of it and stay up, you could always enlighten yourself in the Learning Zone on BBC Two now. Or if it's music you're after, BBC Radio, of course, remains on the air. But from me, Peter Offer, and the rest of the team here on BBC One, a very good morning to you. To help you better understand this example, I'm going to give you the examples of Tuesday and Wednesday. So they would play your favorite programs from 6am on Tuesday to 2am on Wednesday morning before shutting off programs and returning back at 6am that Wednesday morning. Being able to play a text like that can show things like the news and the weather and would greatly help and save dead air time, especially when a program package wasn't available or made for that specific time slot. However, this 1960s version was electromagnetic and unfortunately not too much is known about the system of teletext. You wouldn't see CFAX as the name of the revolutionary technology until 1972 when the fully electronic system was announced and began test transmissions. This time, created by Philips lead designer John Adams, CFAX is a play on words for seeing facts, and quite literally, all CFAX did was make it easier to see facts. And that it sure did. In fact, CFAX pages were the first place to report and document a breaking headline. After two years of preparation and negotiation with the BBC, CFAX began broadcasting on analog televisions on the 23rd of September 1974. Now, just by hitting the text button on your remote, now you can see all the latest headlines. However, it would not be integrated with BBC television until 1980, where it would be aired on BBC One and BBC Two. In 1978, ITV created its own competitor to CFAX, called Oracle. Oracle stood for Optional Reception of Announcements by Coded Line Electronics. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? The British sure love their long-winded names, I don't know why. ITV and the BBC have been competitors since the 1950s though, so this only makes sense. Starting in 1983, Channel 4 jumped on the Teletext train, broadcasting its 4 Channel on View Teletext service. However, this time, their Teletext service has a twist. The service also included animations into their broadcast, which was unheard of at the time. Fortel ran alongside Oracle between 1983 to 1989, showing Oracle in 15 minute bursts. These could be seen during the days when Channel 4 didn't have a program to air on television. Finally, Oracle dissolved in 1992, and finally Fortel on View ran alone. And on the 3rd of April 1997, Channel 4 began broadcasting breakfast television thus ending the Channel 4's teletext. 
Anyway, back when these services were still around, in the 80s this still meant a lot. It meant that channels can still show content and not have dead air, which for those of you who don't know, is hated in both radio and television broadcasting. Navigating the menu works as follows, and you can try this yourself by going to the website in the video description, nathanmediaservices.co.uk. The interface was indexed by numbers, almost like pages of a magazine. On your remote, you would enter the digits of the story or section that you'd like to view. After that, your TV would pull the information that you selected and put it up on the screen for you. There were games and music and... Um, wait, no, yeah, that's pretty much it. It was a simple way of connecting and interacting with programs without there actually being a program package made on television. Being that I don't live in the UK, I reached out to a couple people, one of them being YouTuber Tell the Toaster. He said, even at the time, it looked like shite. It was probably fine in the 1970s, 2000s though, not so much. Another unnamed person said that they didn't know what they were looking at and they just liked putting numbers in. Another anonymous user fondly remembers their father playing a game by the name of Bamboozled, which in fact was a game built in with CFAX. Another individual on Twitter, Nick Weston. I had a nice little conversation with him and he said the following. CFAX was something I checked on a lot and near on daily until it was discontinued. It was something my family and I checked often to keep updated with the general news stories, sports scores, and results. It was definitely something that looked outdated visually, but we appreciated the charm and accessibility of it. The switch over itself was something I remember being slightly negative about when it was first mentioned, though I personally wasn't overly affected by it. I also remember the reminders of it on the news and on the street, and the mascot that was used for the campaign. I then asked him if he wished digital and analog services ran side by side, to which he replied saying, Yeah, the final goodbye was something some people were sad about. I'm someone who is happy retaining things as long as they have use, so I would have been open to having them being used in unison. But I understand why that step was taken. It was inevitable to happen at some point. If you're watching this, by the way, Mr. Nick, a uh, wonderful thank you to you. Back to the subject, back in the 80s and early 90s, it was deemed revolutionary. But as time went on, CFAX became obsolete, with many people opting to use the internet, or better yet, BBC Red Button. On top of that, people began to draw criticisms of CFAX, with many people saying it was slow and sluggish. Still, CFAX stayed on the air, providing the latest on sport, the news, and the weather. That is, until 2008, where a company called Digital UK began a proposed digital switchover, switching from limited analog television to digital television, which opened up brand new doors in the world of British television. Starting in 2008, Digital UK began their digital switchover campaign, allowing UK residents to visit digitaluk.co.uk and call the number 0845 6 50 50 50. The goal of the switch was to allow nearly every home to get digital television from the airwaves. Services like Freeview could not be received or accessed by over one quarter of the UK because digital signals had to be set to low power to avoid radio interference with analog TV signals. The first fully digital country in the UK was Wales, starting with the city of Swansea from August of 2009 and ending with the southeast part of Wales in March of 2010. That includes Cardiff. Here's a clip. To continue watching BBC One Wales, please switch to your digital service. This is BBC One Wales on analogue, and in just a moment, it's being turned off, along with all the remaining analogue channels, forever. This will complete digital switchover in Wales, making us the first digital TV nation in the UK. Tomorrow, you will need to retune your digital equipment again to pick up additional channels. If you need more information, you can call Digital UK on 08456 50 50 50. Lines are open from 6am, or you can visit digitaluk.co.uk.
And that really is it for analogue television in Wales. Engineers are standing by to pull the plugs as we reach another Welsh broadcasting landmark. Please switch to your digital service to continue watching BBC One Wales. But from everyone here at BBC Cymru Wales, goodbye to analogue television. Greater London shut down its transmitters two years later in April of 2012. And here is a video of that shutdown sequence. And now the end of an era. After more than 75 years, BBC Television will cease broadcasting to London on analogue. The BBC's Director General Mark Thompson is standing by to switch off the Crystal Palace transmitter. From that moment, all television in London will be digital only. So, one last time, from the capital's analogue viewers, this is BBC One. But the final shutdown was done in Northern Ireland, starting with BBC Two on the 10th of October 2012, and finally ending with BBC One, UTV, Channel 4, and Channel 5 on the 24th of October 2012. The night of Monday the 23rd, however, was the last we would ever see of CFAX. The time was 11.28 when YouTube user LawHeck took out their camera and began recording the last of Analog, BBC One, and the last of CFAX. Here's that video. One Northern Ireland, where programmes will continue in a few moments, unless you're watching on analogue television. The final stage of digital switchover is about to get underway. In a few moments, we'll be turning off this and all remaining analogue channels forever, and overnight turning on the remaining new high power Freeview transmitters. This will mean there will be disruption to some services on Freeview through the night, and you may need to retune your TV or set top box tomorrow. Satellite and cable viewers are not affected. If you or someone you know needs help or advice with switching to digital or with retuning, you can contact Digital UK on 08456 50 50 50 from 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Calls cost up to 5 pence per minute for most landlines, though calls from mobiles may cost considerably more. You can also visit the website at digitaluk.co.uk, which has information on how to retune. Analogue television has seen many technological advances and additions since the days of Baird and Marconi. From 405 line black and white to 625 line colour, the introduction of CFAX, the world's first teletext system, and NICAM stereo to name just a few. The move to digital television will allow technology to advance still further, providing even more services. And so from tomorrow morning, BBC One Northern Ireland will be available in high definition on Freeview, satellite and cable. Now though, we enter a new era of broadcasting, as this becomes a fully digital UK. From the analogue BBC television service, good night and goodbye. The screen, empty and black, reads only but the words, Goodbye CFAX, 1974 to 2012. After 38 years of what brung families together and setting a stone for what we now take for granted, like closed captioning and TV guide menus, CFAX closes its doors and said goodnight for the very last time. BBC Red Button, formerly known as BBC I, took over its spot in 2012, serving as a replacement for Teletext. It was set to be pulled off air in January of 2020 due to budget issues. Here's a BBC promo explaining the proposed change. The Red Button Text Service is closing. But don't worry, 
you can still get all the news headlines, sport results, and weather updates on our apps and online. So there you go, sorted. Although, you can get a lot more than that. As well as the headlines, you can find local news and global news on topics relevant to you. Plus breaking news, live news, and in-depth analysis wherever, whenever. And of course, you can still get today's weather. But how about reports, hour by hour, day by day, wherever you are, come rain or shine, probably mostly rain. And sport, sure, you can still get the headlines, but how about all the latest stories, highlights, scores, and live action right on your phone? Watch hours of sport on your TV and on the go, and never miss a second of the action. So get the full picture across news, sport, and weather. Watch on BBC iPlayer, download our apps, or visit the BBC website. But after backlash from the community, they ultimately postponed it until the 29th of January 2020, one day before its proposed shutdown. The National Federation of the Blind of the UK created a petition and submitted it to the BBC as well as Downing Street that ultimately saved Red Button from permanent deletion. But now you might be wondering, what about Oracle? What happened to it? Well, the, its death ended almost 20 years earlier to that of CFAX on the 31st of December 1992, except the end of Oracle was less coordinated and in fact slightly more spooky. Oracle began to shut down at 11.31pm, 9 seconds in to be exact. The outer border of pixels began turning black until the small white square was left and the words on the screen. Oracle gone, 1978 to 1972. Absolutely no prior warning, at least none that I can find. And if it doesn't get any odder, the last TV listing went on until 11.21 p.m. where everything looked fine until you got to the end of the listing. At 12 o'clock it reads, the end of Oracle, now the nightmare begins in all caps. But yes, at 12 o'clock that night, Oracle was gone, deleted, booted from the chat, banned from the server. The end. So that is the complete history of not only um, CFAX but also Oracle Teletext. Be sure to stay tuned next time for a, a demo of the, the open source version of CFAX called TFAX. And as usual, you all have a wonderful day and from wherever you are, Goodbye.